Welcome to Sugar MDs. Today we are going to talk about medications. Know your medicine series. We are going to talk about Ozempic. So it's relatively a new medication, came to the market around a year or two ago. Uh, it's a once a week uh, GLP-1 hormone. What is a GLP-1 hormone? It's a gastrointestinal hormone. It's just a fancy name for a gastrointestinal hormone. So why do we give you gastrointestinal hormone, right? So it, well, if you think about it, there must be a communication between your stomach and your pancreas, right? They don't speak English. They don't speak Turkish. Uh, they, they must speak something. So the hormones are basically um, the way of communication between your stomach and your pancreas. Uh, the Ozempic is a gastrointestinal hormone mimicker that mimics the gastrointestinal hormone that your body makes. But when you have a diabetes, just like you are resistant to action of the insulin, you may be resistant to the action of the gastrointestinal hormones. So as a result, we give that to you uh, to compensate for the resistance. And every time you eat, now you suddenly start making insulin. So what's the benefit of that? We used to give people insulin for anything. You have a high sugar, here's insulin. Here you have low sugar, here's insulin. With the development of these drugs within the last 10 years or so, now um, we are using these medications to help with your body's own insulin production. The couple downsides about these drugs, of course, number one, these drugs are expensive. And then your physician has to be somewhat creative to come up with some solutions for you at that point. However, if you can afford the Ozempic, this is how you use it. I'm going to describe from a dosing perspective how can you practically use Ozempic. Prescription label says you start with the 0.25 milligram weekly for four weeks and then you go to 0.5 milligram for the following four weeks. And if you need more, you can go up to one milligram. And that's between you and your physician. Now, 0.25 milligram may be tolerable to around 80 to 85 percent of people in my practice. However, occasionally people will have problems with the medication. Um, we should not be giving this medication to people who already have gastrointestinal problems. Uh, however, assuming that your physician looked into that and you don't have any problem and you got a prescription. If the 0.25 milligram is bothering you and creating a lot of stomach upset, nausea, vomiting, you can actually cut that back. When you dial this pen, you can actually count the number of clicks. There are 17 clicks between 0 and 0 0.25. I have found beneficial that if they start with maybe 5 or 6 clicks and in the following week they can do 10 clicks and the following week they can do 17 clicks, dividing the, the smallest amount, the amount of those into 3 weeks then they are generally more successful in terms of tolerating the medication. Uh, however, your physician will tell you how to adjust the other medications around this medication. Uh, it may be a little tricky. Uh, however, we're always here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to call us at SugarMDs. So what are the extra benefits of Ozempic that comes on the side? Yes, it can cause nausea initially, which is temporary. It can cause vomiting at that point. I think you should really talk to your doctor in terms of continuing versus stopping the medication. However, if you have a good balance, some slight nausea, your appetite goes down, you don't crave for this junk food anymore, you don't crave for even real food anymore, you may actually feel free. You may, do, you may, you may get a lot of things done, you may feel more energy to go exercise. And I see patients sometimes losing 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds or more. Um, depending on, on their personal um, experience with the drug. However, this is one positive effect of Ozempic. So the second positive effect of Ozempic is that when they looked at the cardiovascular safety profile, they found that there was actually 27% reduction in the cardiovascular related deaths. However, the study was not powerful enough to prove that there was a real benefit. So keep that in mind how to use Ozempic correctly. Now this pen comes in multiple different doses. You can see it shows zero right now. For the needles it comes in the package and these needles are really nice and they are really small. Your initial starting dose is typically 0.25 so you have to go all the way until you see the 0.25 the arrow indicates that and then next thing you have to do is take the cap off from the pen. You have to attach that needle to your pen and 
screw that on and you take that first cap off and then there will be another cap you take that off as well now as you can see it's a very tiny needle four millimeter ask your doctor do not give more than longer than this because it's not really necessary to use a longer needle here it is as your abdomen however you can also do in your thigh area at the back of the buttocks or upper arm whatever you prefer two inches away from umbilical area please next thing you do you can clean your skin so all you have to do is go directly 90 degrees to your skin push the plunger you will hear the sound and then you generally wait around 5 to 10 seconds after that you can pull back and unscrew your pen needle and then after that your pen is back to zero is ready for the next injection Remember, this is only once a week injection, you do not do it daily. And after 4 weeks, you can advance to 0.5, which is all the way at the end. Now, this pen holds 2 mg total. So if you are using 0.25 mg for 4 weeks, and then 0.5 mg following 2 weeks, that pen will last you 6 weeks. While in use, this pen can stay outside and you do not have to refrigerate. If you have any problems, with the medication's side effect, the cost, the dosing information, please call us at sugarmds.com. We'll find a way to help you out.